You're all not as good as I thought, so I have to come down to your level. This is the kind of thing that you would say to a mate after beating them 5-0 in FIFA for the fifth time in a row. What it isn't is the type of thing that a coach of the biggest team in Germany should be saying to his players after a poor run of form. To be fair, it's highly possible that this quote is made up. Sky Germany have some explaining to do, but given that Bayern and Tuchel are an easy, low-hanging fruit to target at the moment, everyone believed it to be true. It feels like a never-ending horror film. This one by Leon Goretzka is real. This is the kind of thing you say to your mate after being beaten 5-0 in FIFA for the fifth time in a row. What it isn't is the type of thing a midfield starter in the biggest team in Germany would say to the press. Yet, here we are, 22 games into the season, and Bayern Munich are 8 points off the top of the table against a team that will potentially have had the greatest season in Bundesliga history when all is said and done. Thomas Tuchel doesn't seem to like his players, and I'm beginning to doubt that he likes being in the Munich hot seat at all. If I know one thing from my time of being a professional football watcher, when a coach tells the press that he isn't afraid of being sacked after back-to-back-to-back post-match press conferences, there is undoubtedly blood in the water. Jan Christian Dresen, the CEO of Bayern Munich, came out after the loss to VfL Bochum and calmed down all talks of Thomas Tuchel being sacked. I mean, what else do you expect him to say? Tommy T, pack your bags, big boy. Or something like that. Make no mistake, this man is in the firing line. But is he at fault? Is he the reason that Bayern Munich are in trouble? Or is he being thrown under the bus? Oh, and Harry Kane continues to be the unluckiest man on the planet. Bayern Munich is a mess. What in the world is going on? Yo, what's going on guys? Hope we're all doing well. I'm Tinashe. Welcome back to the channel. This has been quite the news week. Here I am just minding my business over the weekend and then boom. Kylian Mbappe informs PSG of his decision to leave. Thomas Tuchel is on a warpath at Munich. Arsenal are demolishing teams for fun. Man United win four games in a row. The biggest news of the bunch. And then, in all of Germany, the ongoing news of the Bundesliga deciding to bring in private equity investors to help boost the international marketing efforts has not been met well. A very, very long story that deserves its own video, really. Back to Bayern Munich, though. This team is in deep water at the moment. Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back defeats in all competitions is crazy for them, especially in a season, or rather, an entire year, where things haven't been going well for them at all. This is definitely not ideal. Uli Hoeneß, Herbert Heiner, Walter Minix, whoever is in charge of decision-making at Bayern Munich has some explaining to do. The appointment of Oliver Kahn ended in a fiery disaster, with him not even being allowed to participate in last season's title celebrations. The firing of Julian Nagelsmann and the hiring of Thomas Tuchel very well might go down as one of the biggest blunders in the history of Bayern Munich upper management. Here's a fun fact. Julian Nagelsmann managed 84 matches for Bayern, losing 10 with a 71% win rate. It's really not that bad, considering the outrage that surrounded this man. Maybe it was the skateboard. In 44 matches as the Bayern Munich coach, Thomas Tuchel has already lost more games than Nagelsmann in about half of the attempts. 44 matches played, 11 matches lost, and a win rate of 63%. Oof. Of course, stats in football very rarely tell the full truth. It's very hard for them to emulate the human factor. However, in times like this, I think we should probably try and take those numbers at face value. What is going on here? Thomas Tuchel is a very good coach. Nobody can deny this. He's won big at practically every club that he's been a part of at the highest level. Yet, at the moment, things seem to be worse than they have been in over a decade. Which tells you all you really need to know about perspective, in my eyes. Here's a graph of Bayern Munich's point tally after 22 games played in the Bundesliga over the past 10 years. At a glance, it looks like things have pretty much remained the same throughout this entire time. But you look closer and you realize what the real difference is this time around. By Leverkusen. And purely by default, all the supporters and members of the footballing global community are all going to look at Thomas Tuchel for answers. He's the most forward-facing, you know, management-type employee, so it makes sense. The problem is that 
she's not doing himself that many favors in the press. I know the apathetic, I don't give a damn persona is probably just his personality and that he has always been the abrasive type. Not one for pleasantries in the media when he's over it and all that, but lately things have been a little crazy. A lot of people seem to believe that this might be a German media thing, I can't really say. It's gotten to the point where journalists from Sky Germany of all places are apparently fabricating quotes from him for the masses. Regardless of all of that, all of this is coming from somewhere. Bayern Munich look hopeless on the field at times, missing easy chances, passing the ball from side to side, failing to close down the opposition, you know, loose balls or any ball whatsoever, failing to progress the ball, all while Tuchel screams from the sidelines, just asking them to look forward. Another thing is for sure, I doubt that the atmosphere in the Bayern dressing room is a warm one. We've got lots of news about players apparently being alienated. Leon Goretzka looks like he simply does not care at times. There was a moment when he was subbed off against Lazio where he didn't even look Tuchel's way as he approached the bench. It was a cold moment. And Tuchel's tried a lot this year. Formation changes? Yeah, he's done that. Against Leverkusen, trying to match Alonso's 3-4-2-1 formation was a monumental mistake. Bayern were carved wide open as they struggled to deal with Leverkusen's power. Conservative 4-2-3-1s have been the norm, a norm that's drawn a lot of criticism over time. Listen, you can't fault Tuchel for trying different things, is, is what I'm trying to say. And even further to that, Tuchel has a lot of reasons to be upset and plenty of evidence to point to the fact that he may not be the one at fault here. Against Bochum, they had an XG of 3.35 with 27 shots, yet they lost by three goals to two. Bochum had an XG of 1.65. The signing of Harry Kane was expected to take Bayern back to the glory days. Back to the days when they were rocking the best striker on the planet and were guaranteed to win games based on sheer quality. Those days are still gone it seems. For all of Harry Kane's incredible qualities, he is very guilty of missing some guilt edge chances. Can you believe that Harry Kane missed this opportunity against Bochum and this opportunity against Lazio? Does this make any sense? He scores just one of these two and the narrative completely shifts. Harry Kane is still a beast, don't get me wrong. 25 goals in 22 games is elite as elite can get, but he just doesn't really seem to be scoring when it matters, at least over the past three games, for example. At the same time, it also doesn't help that his back line isn't making his life easy at all. Dio Pumacano is a wonderful player when he's on it, but he doesn't seem to deal with nerves all too well when in the spotlight. It really may not be a coincidence that he's been at fault for big errors in the Champions League, now for the second season in a row for Bayern Munich. Last year, his performance against Man City was atrocious. Literally one of the worst Champions League performances of all time, no doubt. This year, already a red card in the first knockout round. Two red cards and just as many matches is crazy. If I was sitting in front of Upamecano, I would probably tell him that he should just block out all the haters and go for the hat trick purely for posterity. Thomas Muller and Jamal Musiala are still a creative force to be reckoned with. Leroy Zane too. As can be seen by Bayern's routinely high XG and passes like this one by Musiala, which is why their toothlessness is so confusing to me. I really don't know what's going on with these guys. It's one of those questions that science simply cannot answer. Given the history of players at Bayern Munich, I'm honestly surprised we haven't heard more rumors about players forming a mutiny. The number of times that key members of the team have banded together and even gone and spoken to the board directly to get a manager fired is more than one, and that's a lot, I think. Players have seemingly always had power at Bayern, it seems like that's just always how it has been. However, even if at this point they decide to form a public mutiny, I'm not really sure how much can be done about this. There are a lot of problems that come with firing Tuchel at this stage of the season. The biggest of which is that that exact scenario is what led to Bayern being in this situation in the first place. Nagelsmann wasn't performing any worse than Tuchel is, yet he was perpetually in danger. I don't want to rewrite history and forget about the allegations that he was leaking news to his journalist girlfriend which of course are purely allegations, or the poor results against teams like Villarreal in the Champions League, knocked out in the round of 16, and Borussia Mönchengladbach and the DFB Pokal, a 5-0 loss with a full-strength team. He was sacked midway through last season. Another problem with firing him at this point gives the outside illusion, at least, that the club is willing to listen to the players over the manager. Now, no big-time elite manager is ever going to want to touch Bayern if that remains the case. In fact, I don't even know which ones are available at this point. Unless... I am Jose Mourinho. I think we lost the game. 
I'm not sure Lazio won it. The story of Bayern's season this year. Injuries and suspensions and international duty have been a big problem for Bayern this year. I don't think anyone is going to deny that. But I do think that those aren't the main reasons for what we've been witnessing all season. Bayer Leverkusen are a completely different story. I've already spoken about them a bunch of times this season. It's literally been only three weeks since the last dedicated video on them on this channel. And since that video, they have not lost a single game. It's honestly unbelievable. At the start of the video, I mentioned that this could potentially be the greatest one season Bundesliga team of all time. And that's 100% the truth. 32 matches in all competitions and no losses. In the Bundesliga in particular, the highest number of points ever recorded in a single season is 91 by Bayern Munich in 2013. Now, for Leverkusen to surpass that, they need to win every single one of their remaining matches. And I don't know if they will do that, but it's possible. When you look at numbers like that, it's pretty easy to see why Leon Goretzka feels the way that he does. After the loss to Bochum, he was asked if he believes if Bayern still have a shot at the title. Fair play to him because he answered with what was in his heart. Not right now. I'm being honest about that. And there we have it. What in the world is going on at Bayern Munich? It's, it's a whole mess. With that being said, feel free to follow all the socials, subscribe if you haven't, that'd be great. That's all for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed, hope you're having a great day, cheers, and I will catch you in the next one.